right. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for signing up and for attending this uh, presentation. Um, my name is Ivan Silva. I run a makerspace here at the Belvedere Tiburon Library in Marin County in San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm an ambassador with the Library Maker platform. And Library Makers is a community that connects and support library staff all over the country in libraries, big and small. And whether you're just getting started or you've been making for a while, Library Makers is inviting you to ask questions, share your experience with colleagues, and um, be involved in the platform. Um, give me one second. Today, uh, we're going to welcome Etienne Douglas, who's also in the Bay, Bay Area, and he's a library technology program coordinator at Marin City Library. Mm -hmm. And he's a 3D printer, 3D printing guru, as you can see in his space. He's got, he's surrounded by 3D printers. <laughs> uh, Etienne, uh, I've met him here in Marin, in Marin County for a while, and he started this amazing a program called the Web Stars, where they train teen teenagers and get them started in careers in tech. And he probably owned one of the first 3D printers in in the Bay Area, probably in libraries in general. And he did amazing things and continues to do amazing things. And I use them as a resource anytime I need to troubleshoot, uh, shop around, have questions. Uh, so I hope this uh, presentation is uh, a little bit of the help I get on a daily from Etienne. You get a little sample of it and hopefully you reach out to him on Library Makers and he can help you also. <laughs> so Etienne, take, o take, take over. It's all you. All right. Well, thank you everyone for being here and listening to me, be willing to listen to me. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of background with my 3D printing. Um, so we started around 2016, um, our program and it basically patrons can make, uh, appointments to come in and do 3d printing. Um, and that's it. I mean, uh, we, there's different rules that we have. So if we have any questions about, you know, the rules, um, you can ask those, but uh, it's been very popular. Uh, we have had inventors and kids, uh, you know, come down. We had several inventions, prototyping our machines, um, and kids, you know, making Halloween masks. Um, we have cosplayers that use us regularly to, to make uh, parts for their costumes. Um, and it's pretty open as far as like we, there's restrictions, but um, as far as other libraries that that have 3D printers, uh, we're probably the most open um, as far as letting patrons come and print almost anything. So, um, yeah, so that's just a little gist of the program. Um, the first thing I want to go into is like, what is 3D printing and what types of 3D printing uh, the 3D printers are out there. So the majority of 3D print of 3D printing for the average consumer is called FDM, Fused Deposited Manufacturing. Um, and that's a fancy term for basically additive layering. So, uh, you know, you get a material, most commonly plastic, and it feeds with a motor to a nozzle, which then heats up and melts the plastic and then follows a blueprint from the one, uh, from whatever model you set up uh, to create the object or whatever you're printing. Um, so if you really think about 3D printing, um, the mechanical part of it is is pretty simple the 
innovative part about 3D printing is the ability for the machine to follow the blueprint because you're basically, you have an X, Y, and Z axis. So X, front, X, X and Y is right and uh, front and back, right and left. Uh, Z is up and down. So that's basically three, the three dimensions, right? Right, left, front, back, up and down. And the ability for a machine to do a layer, one layer and then uh, move down another layer and then continue is what 3D printing is. So it's uh, mechanically is very simple, but the trick is uh, the technology behind uh, telling the printer where to move and how to move. Uh, so I'll give you a small tour of what I'm, what I have. So if you can switch over to, um, if you can spotlight my phone right now, I'm going to walk around. All right, so this is my space. And as you see, I have several 3D printers. Uh, oh, you're on the you're on the other computer. I'll wait. No, the other ATN. <laughs> Can I spot that myself? Can you spotlight yourself? Let me see. There we go, yes. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so that's a Prusa. The, the one on the left is a Prusa NK Plus, the newest one. Uh, Ultimaker, I have a Lowe's bot. Uh, and this is an Ultimaker a S7. Another Lowe's Bot Mini, an Ultimaker, Ultimaker, uh, another Prusa, and a Bamboo. Uh, what are you printing on that Bamboo right now? Okay. <laughs> yes, so on, on the Bamboo, right now, I'm printing a airless basketball. So that uh, right now, Wilson uh, came out with a, uh, a prototype for airless basketball, and they're actually selling it for $2,500 right now. <laughs> Um, I found a model that somebody had made, uh, for free. So I'm printing it out and it's supposed to bounce depending on the material that you use. It's supposed to bounce just like a regular basketball. I think the material I'm using won't, it'll, it won't bounce as, uh, as high, but, um, it'll definitely uh, do something. So, um, which also leads me to material. Um, there's most of the 3d printers use plastic. There are some that use, uh, uh, carbon fiber, nylon, some light metals. Uh, if you get one of those, those are usually a lot more advanced and a lot more expensive. Uh, but the, material that we normally use. So when we set it up, um, we had to do a whole safety inspection and make sure that, you know, the, 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 there weren't fumes that were going to be harmful to people in the building. We, mainly our prints are going to be used, in, used inside the library. Uh, so it was determined that PLA is safe. The PLA is, um, uh, organic 
material plastic, so it's made from like sugar cane and cornstarch, so it's biodegradable and it doesn't uh, have noxious fumes. Uh, some uh, material like ABS, um, polycarbonate, is need, you need ventilation to be able to print those, or you need like a printer with a filter on it. Um, so you, you really need a space to set up to have that type of uh, uh, filtration and, and um, uh, ventilation. So uh, mainly what, and we all, I also use uh, PETG, which is also, I use BioPETG, which is biodegradable and, and is not uh, harmful. Uh, the PLA is a little bit, uh, PLA is probably one of the lowest melting points, so it's not as strong. So it's good for like prototyping, but for like actual use, um, you know, if it gets hot, it could warp. Uh, like if you, you know, I've, I made things for my car, like a, uh, a telephone, like a holder that goes on my vent. And if it gets 100 degrees, that is just going to warp. You know, you really can't get around that with the PLA. Uh, Pet G has a little bit higher melting point, so it's about 240. Um, and that is a little bit stronger, so you can actually use it in applications. Um, ABS is one of the strongest, but that's uh, toxic if you're using it indoors. So you need ventilation with that because ABS is actually what they use for football helmets. So if you're printing in ABS, you can actually use it for applications, uh, real world use. Um, let's see what, maybe what are the, um, the recommendations I would say for starting out in 3D printing. Um, my first recommendation is you need, if you're not a big techie person, you need a reliable printer. Um, and you also need backups. So uh, you want a printer that is pretty much plug and play not much maintenance, uh, doesn't break down after, you know, a lot of usage. Um, but the fact is with printers, you're going to have a lot of, um, you're going to have to tinker with it a little bit. You're going to have to do something. So you want to kind of minimize that um, when you're looking at a printer. Um, there's a lot of recommendations I could uh, make. Uh, like the ultimate, when we first started, the Ultimakers were the ones that we uh, looked at. Uh, we actually went down to Sunnyvale and looked at theirs, and they had um, they had MakerBots, and they were complaining that they always broke down. Um, so we were we shied away from those, um, and then we looked into you know different three D printers, and at the time, Ultimaker was the most reliable, and I can tell you that. The ultimakers that we got are still running. So, but you know, there, there's been a lot of tinkering, a lot of clogging and stuff, but um, the ones that we got in the beginning are still going strong. So, so if you're inclined to, you know, um, work through some of those issues, then it'll be a good printer for you. Um, you have any questions? I can't see the chat, so I, mean, I can if I look at it, but um, oh, let me check on the chat. Sorry. Um, where is the chat? Um, well, I'm on. I'm in the market for one. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Uh, Julia says, "What do you think about the Prusa?" Yes, the Prusa. So uh, I like the Prusas. Um, they're fairly easy to use. Um, they work very well. Um, they're depending on, so I, I, so I have, 
I have two here in the space. I have one at, at the library. So um, one that I have here at the space has the five material, uh, multi-material unit, which is basically, it allows you to print uh, up to five different materials or five different colors at the same time. Um, if you're starting out, I wouldn't recommend getting the multi-material unit. There's a lot of, there's a, uh, since there's a lot of switching back and forth, you run into a few problems that you have to usually, uh, uh, you know, interfere and go ahead and fix before it continues to print. So, um, the one, one that I have here is a single, um, one material at a time. And that one is very reliable. It, it's, uh, they describe it as like a Honda. It just runs. Um, from time to time, you do get clogs, but they're per fairly easy to uh, unclog. Um, yeah, I, I like it. And the software is pretty straightforward, pre pretty simple. Um, and the software for most of the printers are is straightforward. Um, there are some things you have to know when you're 3D printing and depending on the object on how to tweak the settings um, to get your, you know, get your object to print. Um, but for the most part, uh, the software for most printers is called Cura. And it's usually a version of, a different version of that. Uh, some of the printers have their own uh, proprietary software. So like Pusa has the uh, Pusa Slicer. Uh, Lowsbot uses Cura. Ultimaker uses Cura. Many of the other um, uh, printers, um, they also use Cura. They don't have make you know the some of the the cheaper ones that uh, don't necessarily have their own software. They they just you can just plug and play Cura and it'll work with most uh, printers. So, uh, but I do recommend the Prusa. That's a good beginner one. Uh, I'm sorry, I, Ivan, um, you had a question? Uh, uh, no, Wyatt uh, from Akron in Ohio mentioned that you teach pat patrons how to 3D print. Uh, and he was wondering if you just teach 3D printing basics or do you teach modeling? <laughs> okay, yes, I'm looking at it right now. Um, oh, okay. Yes, so we... So when patrons make appointments, so the goal really for the appointment system was for patrons to learn how to use the 3D printer um, on their own. So when they make an appointment, uh, they'll come in, use the 3D printer, set it up, print, and then go about their business, right? Um, we initially, if they don't know how to use it, we initially help them, uh, we'll put the, we'll show them how to take the model file, put it in the slicer program, and then save it to the SD card or, you know, print to the network, um, and then start, start their print job. But with 3D printing, there's so much to really know, like you just have to spend time really to uh, learn how to use it because, you know, there's changing material. There's what's the settings for this material. Um, you know, if you have a printer that has dual uh, nozzles, how do you differentiate? How does, how does that, how does that work with the model? Um, so a patron, unless they really are experts themselves, there's a few times that they would have to go through this. So it's more of a like learning process. In the history of, of uh, our, having our 3D printing program, we maybe had two patrons that I was comfortable enough to just let them go and use the 3D printer uh, without us uh, uh, like helping them out. Um, um, so and, and I was hoping, and when we started, we were hoping to more like create like a uh, community. Because I know at Sunnyvale, 
the librarians hardly ever really did anything. It was more the, the people who came to use the printer that uh, did a lot of the work on them and uh, help people out. So um, second part of the question, we do, uh, we do offer basic, we point people to a uh, Tinkercad for basic 3D modeling. Um, I'm not, that's probably the extent of my um, modeling uh, skill is Tinkercad. Uh, I think I've maxed out the abilities of Tinkercad, so I probably should move on to a, a more robust program. Um, but uh, that's what that's what we use, uh, and that's what we teach, and, and encourage people to to uh, to go look out in their own time. Also, um, yes, bamboo. So I was I was getting to that. Bamboo is probably if you're starting out the best printer to get. And this is this it's a new one, and that's the one right over my this shoulder. Uh, it's a new one. Um, but it's the most user friendly. And I say that because um, it prints pretty quickly out of the box without too much technical know how. Um, if something goes wrong, it usually will stop itself. So there's a lot of fail safes on the bamboo. Uh, and then the I, I haven't had any issue with the uh, till I the top of it, you can see right, right there, uh, the, that's a multi-material unit. They call it an AMS. So that has four materials at the same time. Uh, I haven't had any issue with that. So, And what, uh, what's the software you're using to slice? Uh, so Bamboo has their own proprietary software, which is called Bamboo Lab. Uh, it's very similar to the, I think they use the Prusa software. Um, I don't know why I'm pointing. Um, I think they use the Prusa software because uh, it looks very similar to it. So if you're okay. used to the Prusa slicer, Bamboo is going to be almost exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, one thing, um, I know some people are muted because they're multitasking, but if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, but otherwise we can keep reading from the chat uh, your question. So whichever works. Um uh, do you want to uh, tackle Beryl's questions, um, um, Etienne? Yeah. Have you yeah. run into an issue with low quality prints from decent files? Any top settings that one should look at to address this? Okay, so, um, so low qual. So if I'm if I'm understanding your question correctly, so a low quality print um usually is determined by the settings so the quality if we're talking about the quality like the way the print looks is it smooth um like the uh can you see the lines and the strength you know like the density that's all in the settings so the first setting is the resolution, um, which is also called um, uh, layers, like layer resolution. And that determines how many layers that your object is gonna, um, the printer is gonna go through to create your object. So the lowest setting up, at least for most of the printers I work work with is 0 0.06 millimeters. And that will create like a very, very smooth, um, high quality looking print, All right? So, cause some models out there are, you know, are designed to not look great, you know, as far as like, you know, polygon, like if you're printing like a Pokemon um, and is not like designed to be like it's like a polygon, kind of like a um, was it like like Minecraft quality or like Roblox quality. It's not designed to be very like look very good. Um, but the printer doesn't know like you know the quality of the 
of the model. It's just printing what it's told. So um, if you're printing at like 0 0.06, you're going to get a very smooth. You're not going to be able to see like lines in the print. You're just going to be very hard to distinguish where the layers are. Um, the lower you are, so the higher you get, uh, the more the the bigger distance for the layers. So um, if you're printing at like say point three, you're gonna get like a whole bunch of lines. You're gonna see the lines throughout the print. You're gonna be able to see every single layer. But uh, a higher resolution also means a faster print. So let's say, uh, so point two is like a normal, is like a default layer height. So let's say you have a print job as point two, and um, it has a hundred layers. Uh, if you go down to point one, you're doubling the amount of layers. So it's point one, point two millimeters down to point one. So that means it has to be two layers for every one. Uh, if if you were printing in point two, so a five hour print job can turn into a ten hour print job. Um, and then like the lower you go, so like a 0 0.06 is going to be like, oh, man, like I, I think the basketball is like 0.16, which is pretty low. And that's taking, it's going to take four days. So it's a, it's a four day print, but with something like that, and something I want to show to people and actually use it, I want the high quality. So it depends, like what you know, what are you using it for? Um, is it? And then the density. So when patrons come in and they they're you know saying I'm printing this part for oh like a handle for my refrigerator or you know cabinet or whatever, I'm saying okay, what what are you using it for? It doesn't need to be strong, and that really is the density, you know, um, because when you're printing, uh, if you and let me give you an example. So, um, this is at 20%. You really can't see inside of it, but, well, let me see if you can see that cross hatching. So, that yeah, I, can, I can see it. Yeah. So, that is 20%. If it was 100%, you wouldn't see anything because it would be completely solid. So once it re once it reaches a certain threshold, the printer is going to not um, is going to print a certain percentage density. So you can say 20, 50, 70, 85, whatever. And um, so if you're using if you have something that's going to be uh, you're printing something that's going to be stressed and like you know needs to be strong, you should print it you know above. The twenty because you know something like five or ten or twenty could snap easily. So those are two different uh, settings. So one was resolution, but the second one is layer density, or they're the same. Uh, infill, yeah, infill density. So infill, infill density. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's layer resolution and infill density. Layer, re layer. Um, yeah, let's see if I can show you. So. Like this is is real. This one's really hard to see the light. Like if you look, you can see like the lines going across. The smaller the layers, the less lines. It'll just be a smooth finish. Um, and point two is like general. It looks good for for the most part. You know, unless you want to really print. Like I, I printed name tags. Oh, here let me go grab my name tag and I'll show you. Portal is following you. <laughs> it knows where I'm at. Uh, and by the way, um, those uh, microphone stands. Oh, um, can you see those? Well, it's following you, but um, if you go towards the microphone stands, mm -hmm. Portal is following you. <laughs> yeah, I can show those. I can show these too. So these are really cool. 
Uh, let me show my uh, uh, name tag yeah. real quick first. But, so this is the this is the name tag that I printed out, and I printed this out in point one resolution because I wanted to I wanted it to be uh, smooth. You know, I wanted I wanted the because um, kind of small lettering. Um, so yeah, and I printed this out on the bamboo. This is one of the first prints I did on the bamboo. Because I saw it at the uh, Maker Fair and they had logos and they did a very good job on the logos, the ones I saw at the Maker Fair. So I was like, let me print out um, and see how it does on the name tag. So I like that one. And then the yeah, the stands. So this is a microphone stand that I printed out for. Uh, we have a podcast um, table recording. Uh, to the left here, and the this holds the microphones on the table while you know they're sitting on the table. Um, this one I printed out on the on the ultimate on the Ultimaker S7. So uh, this is a two color print, which the Ultimaker S7 has has dual nozzles, so you can do two different materials at the same time. Uh, and then just to give you an idea, this it printed like this. So it starts so it didn't at need support. Uh, no support, right. So if it printed like this, you would need support because you have all this space here. And once it gets to this part, you have all the space here. Once it gets to this part, it's printing in midair. Right. So it needs it doesn't have anything to print on, so You'll just get a lot of strands. It'll usually bridge the gap eventually, but it'll just be a lot of strands, and and the print um, will look bad. Um, but there's ways of designing. So say this was a 45 degree angle. You could, if this was a 45 degree angle, you could actually print this without supports, because the way the printer works. Is going at an angle. It kind of, you know, um, is able to like go as a small distance without having the the material strand. So it, it's so people who design things like that print all together in one piece and then have moving parts. The way they do that is printing at angles like that uh, are designing their their objects at angles so you don't have to have support which would then you know mess up because you have to go in and remove it it will mess up the moving parts so there's a there's really a science to uh figuring out what angle you can print at that you won't need supports but you'll also be able to uh, print with your parts not uh fusing together Okay, I'm gonna go back in the chat and see if there's any. Um, I don't know if Trina had a question about the age of PLA, but that question that kind of came up on the platform mm -hmm. before: How do you store your material? How do you store your material in your space? Your PLAs and all that. Um. So most of my material I keep in the boxes. Uh, I do have so I'm what I'm gonna order is a a bin that um, kind of keeps moisture out. That's the biggest thing with, with storing material is keeping the moisture out. So I I always keep those little silica gel packets. Oh, okay. And and uh, so when I whenever I put in material in anywhere like a box or something, I throw one of those in. So. Uh, it keeps it, you know, from moisture from uh, accumulating on there. Oh. Julia has a question. Um, how do you change colors on the Ultimaker? Is it predetermined on the print file? Um, okay. I think that's the S7, right? It's the S7, but it's it's any multi um, material printer. So that's a that's a great question. So the uh, when you're printing in two materials with the printer that has multiple 
nozzles. Uh, you the the model file has to have it has to be two separate model two separate files. So I'll use the um, my name tag as an example. Okay. So when I design this, I design the um, the whole name tag, but the separate pieces are the top, which is white, and the lettering. So the one model is, if I showed you the model by itself, you would just see the top and, I'm sorry, you would just see the top and the lettering by itself. Then the next one is the bottom, which is the blue part, and the top lettering. And that's a separate model file. Now, when uh, you use uh, two different models, and I see somebody put a, a, a link in the chat. So, oh, did somebody ask me if I think I just des I designed this on in Tinkercad. So, um, in Tinkercad, you can combine uh, your designs and group or well, group them. So I have uh, the lettering at the top and the bottom is grouped. The lettering at the, uh, the top part, the white background and the lettering down at the bottom is grouped. But there, I, and I'm not 100% sure that this is necessary, but in my mind, I think it is. So uh, I position the files so it looks like one file and then you select each part of the file and export each part of the file where it's at. So, because in my mind, the Cura needs to know how to merge them. So when you put it into the, um, into the program, you select both objects and you hit merge and then it merges into one, um, into one file or into one object. But the reason you need two different models because in Kira, you need to specify, all right, the top lettering in the bottom part needs to be nozzle one. The top part and the, and the lettering on the bottom needs to be nozzle two. And that will determine what colors it prints out at. And, and it'll be able to switch and print it into the same object. And so you have this, so you don't have to like put it together. Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So Maybe after after it merges, you still can uh, manipulate the two models separately on Cura. It doesn't convert them into one single mod model. Uh, after you merge, you can so you can change the size of them. You can uh, uh, you know make it bigger and and they'll both become you know, proportionally the same, you know, whatever you do to it. Um, so, I mean, really the most of what you want to do is, is, is in your, when you're designing to do all the work in your design and then just let Kira do the, the preparing for printing. That right. makes sense. One thing about sourcing, um, where are you getting, where are you sourcing all your materials from? Where do you usually? So, um, so over these years, I've uh, gotten, we, we've ordered a lot of material from different places, Amazon and uh, Ultimaker. Uh, I think initially we were getting everything from Ultimaker. And um, then we started, um, um, right, I know I came across some other materials. So, the materials that I normally per, uh, purchase now uh, is from 3D Print Life uh, and also um, Polymaker. So, uh, the 3D Print Life is very good, uh, very strong PLA, uh, good quality. 
Um, it took me a while to figure out the settings for it because I thought it was trash because and uh, the uh, it would move on the plate when I was printing, but then I didn't look at the settings and it's you're not supposed to have any you're not supposed to use a heated bed so once i did that it it was fine and um so we print most of our stuff out either polymaker or 3d print life depending on 3d print i'm sorry polymaker uh, has a lot of like um uh, how can i say like like uh, glossy uh thing uh, um print uh, filament that looks real good, like silk and gold and 3D print life is pretty basic. It's just, you know, yellow, blue, green, uh, red, black. Uh, they don't really have any fancy colors. But, so, but they do have the recycled and the organic one, right? 3D print life. They do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a lot of their stuff is, is recyclable. Um, um, so like the BioPetG that I get is 3D print life, right? Um, the um, and then they have uh, Enviro prints. They have al algae. Uh, so uh, filament made from algae. I if you're gonna use that, I highly recommend that you get it. I mean, you don't need to be ventilated because it's toxic. You just need to you need to be ventilated because it doesn't smell good. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna you wanna smell like plankton. You want the room to smell like plankton? Go ahead and print algae. It's you know it's <laughs> noticeable. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Beryl has a question. Uh, what is the common length of print that your patrons have? Do you let print printers run unsupervised after hours? Yes, we do. So, um, like, uh, um, I feel like anything under five hours is. I mean, depending on what they're making, but it's just not like worth it to print. Um, well, there's a lot of good, co cool things that you can print that that go longer, right? Um, so what our uh, rules are, it has to be a maximum of 10 hours. Now, that's a baseline. Um, I don't mind. It's, it's really just a line of set to be able to say, hey, we can't print something that's 20, 20 plus hours. Um, so, like, if a print job is like 13, 15 hours, we, and we'll print it. But we're really restricted because in the branch, because we have uh, appointments that could for the next day. And we can't let somebody print for like, say, 48 hours because that's going to run into other appointments. So that's why we limit it in the branch. Here in the makerspace, there's going to be real no real limit because we have so many printers. So it's really logistic, it's just a logistical thing and a budget thing. So if you're, if, um, unless you're having people bring their own material or paying for their own material. Uh, ours is, uh, our, all of our prints are free. So the library pays for the material. We have a budget uh, every year for a certain amount of for, you know, we can, I get $1,200, I think, for filament. And we, I never run into a problem where we run out of filament. Now I, we run out of a specific color, so we we'll get down to where people only have like two or three choices of color. But you know, like who's going to argue if you're, you know, they're getting it for free? So, um, but here, yeah, it, it's and hopefully, I mean, I think it's a, it's a good problem to have if if all the prints are being used. You know, yeah. uh, I, I would love that to happen. <laughs> I have two follow-ups. One, one is that you actually also live stream your prints. So if stuff goes wrong, you can check out your live stream of your print, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's an important uh, uh, question is 
because like if a print job goes wrong and so like a, on the on the older model print most every printer that you get nowadays has some type of sensor filament sensor or some type of sensor to let that will stop the print if something goes wrong um the older printers like the ultimaker 2 ultimaker 3s if something goes wrong say the print doesn't stick or it comes unglued after a while and you're not looking at it you're not paying attention to it you can you can get the blob from hell and that will basically disable your printer um i will show you what it looks like it's happened several times the dreaded blob from hell <laughs> yeah. this bad boy this is the result of a print not sticking and just continuing to print like it doesn't know it's, it's it thinks it's doing you a favor and it's just continuing to print but really it's costing you 450 dollars because that's what this head costs yeah so that's um that's why it's important to, to live stream um so if I if I can if I check in on it and I see it's um, you know this is happening, then I can stop the print remotely. Yeah. At least it depends on the printer. Like this printer, I could have stopped it if if I had if I had checked in on it. I thought it was okay, but if I had checked in on it, I could have stopped it remotely, and um, and this wouldn't have happened. And uh, I like, using Octo Studio for the live uh, live stream. Oh, uh, what do I use? Yeah. yeah is it um, Octo Studio? Uh, oh, OBS. Oh, is that what you're using? OBS. Okay. Yeah. So, OBS, but, so, like, depending on the print, so, like, the, the, uh, the three has a built-in camera. Um, so you, there's a, there's a way to, to, to get to the camera feed. Uh, through the IP address in the browser, so that's what you have to like, like throw into OBS, or you can just have a, um, a webcam plugged directly into a computer that's focused on your printer and stream it that way. The Bamboo also has a camera, and that the Bamboo was very. It took me a lot of a time to figure out how to uh, get the feed for that to feed into. Uh, the stream, but I've, I've figured it out. So if anybody ever has a, ish, a question about that, just just ask me and I'll show you how to do it. Um, so like the two, the, the Ultimaker 2s don't have cameras. The Prusas don't have cameras. So I just use webcams, uh, at least in the branch, uh, to plug into a laptop and focus on it so I can see what's going on. Um, the, all, all the Ultimakers now um, from the three up, have cameras. So like the S3, the S7, um, the Lowe's bots don't. So those you have to do like you know, like I said, with the webcam. Um, but and so like the Ultimakers, you can you can cut off print jobs remotely. The Bamboo, you can do it remotely. Um, the I'm, there may be a way with the Prusas. I'm not sure. Because the, the and, and it would have to be the new one because the new one is networked, the old ones aren't. Um, so I have to look into the Prusas, but the Prusas are less prone to the big glob. It's not impossible, but they it's just less prone. The Ultimaker is really, if it starts going, if it starts going off the rails, it's you're gonna get that glob. So you really have to kind of be where it was going on with them um and then the lows box too also are not as prone to the glob um, i've come in and the lows bot has messed up and it's just a big you know like like 
bunch of uh, filament, just strands of filament, but it's not like globbed up onto the nozzle, which is good. That's what that's the that's the one thing you don't want. Yeah. Um what what software are you using for your appointments for scheduling or uh so we use um we use LibCal. LibCal, okay. Yeah, LibCal and right now so we used to use the room bookings, but LibCal migrated to something called Spaces. And this is all free by the way, I believe. If you sign up for LibCal in your library, I think you get like that for free. As long as you, I think there's, um, like a certain level is, is, is free and then you have to pay for like more advanced users. But, uh, spaces, um, it's like booking is really for like booking, rent, booking a room. Um, if your library does like, you know, has like a community room and, and people can book it, that's what it's used for, but it's perfect for like booking a 3d printer. Um, so, because you have you set up times, uh, people can um, sign up through email, through, and it sends them a reminder if they like. Sends, it sends us an email uh, and puts it on our calendar. So, it um, I have it integrated. You can connect it to a Google Calendar, and I have it integrated so to my Outlook calendar. So it feeds to a 3D printed calendar and I can see check in each day and see, okay, here I got a three o'clock and I got a five o'clock. Um, and it's all, it does it all by itself. Like the, the room bookings, we used to have to manually, every time we get an email for an appointment, we have to manually put it into our calendar so everybody in the branch knew that um, there was a, uh, uh, there was a appointment um so now since it's integrated to with google and going to our calendar it's so if somebody cancels it just removes it off we don't have to go in there and actually delete the you know uh, the appointment which is good hey so um mm -hmm. i i don't see any other questions but uh i'm in the i'm shopping for a new 3d printer like what should I what should I get? What's what's new? What's good? <laughs> well, so I would recommend I would recommend the bamboo. Um, um, it's it's a pretty new one, but as far as long as I've had it, I've been very impressed, and I'm very impressed with the price point. It's pretty cheap. I thought I, I would think it would be more expensive than it is like if you would add like the ultimakers are pretty expensive mm -hmm. um what the band for the size of the of the build um the the build plate and the quality and kind of like the the fail safe the bamboo is great um now that's oh the the bamboo i have is um the carbon x1 Carbon X one, okay. Yeah. Um, there's... I, wonder if, I wonder if that's what why it has. Um, he mentioned earlier one. Mm -hmm. Why it had, um Yeah, I wonder if he has the X one also. Um, yeah, we're kind of getting towards the end. Um... Yeah. And let me. Uh, I'll. Um, I'm gonna share my screen on the other. On the other computer. Mm -hmm. So, um, Wyatt, um, Wyatt is asking how many people work in your space. Uh, so right now, uh, so right now is pretty much me setting it up because we're not officially open uh we're opening later this later this month to the public um so i'm in here setting up a lot of stuff um but once we get open i have so it's gonna be myself and i have about four web stars so they'll be in the space um they'll be helping out when we're open um 
So, and then I'm also going to be, uh, we're going to, I'm probably going to be training some other staff. Because web stars are like high school, college age. Um, so, I'm probably, we're probably going to be training some other staff from our system to be able to come down here if I'm not here. Uh, that are familiar with the you know with the uh, technology. Um, now we this the space that we have here probably match capacity like six people. So um, if we have more than that, we'll just have to like you know put a table outside and, and have people do stuff out there. Right. Um... Yeah, if you want to share something or um okay. So you Go can ahead. see this, right? Yeah. So this is the one that I have. Um and it's like, yeah, I think it was man, this is this fifteen hundred. I mean fourteen forty nine, you know, but I think that's what the AMS, I think that's what the uh I'm not sure if it's with the I think it is. Yeah, it comes with the multi-material unit. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, to me that's a really good deal. Uh, yeah. They have the that's the that's the combo. So the carbon by itself, the printer just by itself with the one head is um, twelve hundred. Um, they have a bunch of you know P one, uh, and that's like nine fifty. So. It, they're really positioning themselves to, to be, the um, kind of like the introductory uh, 3D printer. Uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. I would love to see those to be the first 3D print, 3D printer that lots of libraries have because that's such an easy printer to have. Yeah. 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 With that, um, I want to thank everyone for coming by and dropping in and participating and attending the event. And we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, so I just dropped a feedback form on the chat. If you can do that, that would be great. Um, and uh, yeah, let me see what else. Um, Yeah, let us know your feedback, and um, we hope to see you at the Library Makers. Um, if you can, come to the platform. If you're not part of it, join. It's a great place where we can share information. And um, come to Library Makers space. And thanks again for attending the presentation today. Yeah, thank you. And, you know. Thank you, Etienne, for sharing area. your expertise. Sorry, no go ahead. Yeah, if you're in the area, please come down and and, and check it and check us out. Um, I'm definitely I could use some help uh, trying to figure out how to use my laser cutter. So <laughs> great, thank you. I'll be there to help you with the laser cutter. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for attending. Bye. Let me see.